Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the Crimson Front event, which holds one of Battlefield's fan favorite game modes from Battlefield 1 called Frontlines. And this is a return to Battlefield, the first time we've seen Frontlines since Battlefield 5, which was underwhelming. So how do they do it in 2042? Well, as you can guess by the thumbnail, there are some pretty terrible aspects, but, you know, I'll give my full thoughts. But don't worry, that isn't all we're going to cover. This video is sort of a two-in-one. After I talk about Frontlines and what they probably could have done better and whether or not I like it, we're going to be discussing some of the new games on, on the horizon that I would like to suggest to you guys, and I want to hear your thoughts about them. On top of a potential second channel idea where I talk about some of my personal interests, which include classic menswear, fragrances or cologne, and generally just stuff that I like. So without further ado, let's get into the video. If you enjoyed the content, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I also stream every single day at twitch.tv slash enders, first link in the description. Join the Discord and follow me on Twitter as well. Everything is in the description. So, Frontlines in Battlefield 2042. I have to say that it's better than I thought it would be, but oh my god, is this game mode so infuriating to play sometimes because of an issue that has really always plagued Battlefield 2042's maps and modes, and I genuinely think that it's sort of baked into the game and they can't figure out a way to fix it, or maybe they won't fix it because they just don't see it as a problem, and what I'm referring to is just how wide these sectors are. Some of these sectors, I wouldn't be surprised if they're 600 meters wide, particularly on Discarded. Obviously, when you play maps like Redacted and Haven, it's not going to be that noticeable, even though it still is, but I have gotten shot in the side and shot in the back by people that just camp in sectors that aren't even part of the, the game mode, really. And to make matters even worse, knowing the Battlefield 2042 player base, of course there's a spawn beacon, or 10, and you can't find it, and the maps are so big that it doesn't really make sense to go looking for it unless you are rel really close to it. So for the people wondering if this iteration of Frontlines touches Battlefield 1's original iteration, the answer is obviously no, guys. I mean, I don't think anyone expected this iteration of Frontlines to come anywhere close to Battlefield 1's original iteration. Because let's face it, Frontlines in Battlefield 1 was one of those special maps and modes and game combinations that just sort of worked and felt good. With Battlefield 2042 and this event, they're sort of just slapping on these layouts, and you can tell because they don't play well, and they're just naming the game mode Frontlines. Not a lot of thought or actual work has gone into the out-of-bounds lines, the sector design, and the overall flow. They just say, okay, here's a map, here's the layout, we're gonna call this Frontlines, we're gonna, we're gonna etch the sector lines, and you, do, you guys are just gonna have to play. Overall, I do think this Crimson Fronts event is better than some of the other events, but this game mode, guys, I mean, comment down below if you've played Discarded and just got constantly shot in the side or back. It really is annoying sometimes. And you can't really do much in the way to mitigate it because, again, of the way the sectors are designed, there's such a large area that people are just in extremely unpredictable locations. Moving on to another topic, that is pretty much it for Battlefield 2042 until we get the stadium map, which is going to be on April 30th. Now, moving on to some other games, X Defiant, I may or may not have already posted a video of this, but for those of you that don't know, X Defiant is having a playtest from April 19th to the 21st, and I will absolutely be playing that, and I, like I said, I probably already posted a video on the channel about it. I am recording this video before the playtest starts, by the way, just to avoid any confusion. From what I remember from the last time I played X Defiant, generally speaking, the game just didn't wow me. I really think it's a very generic, very uncreative cookie cutter game that is very boring in my opinion. I'm sorry, and that's an unpopular opinion because I know X Defiant has a lot of hype behind it, but generally speaking, there's nothing special about it, and I don't find it to be that interesting. However, I do hope it is successful, and I do hope they do fix some of the things that I found annoying from the previous playtests. For instance, those of you might remember the spider drone that jumps on your face and locks you in place that was available during the last playtest. Hopefully they have vaulted that from the game, and they've made some better balance improvements. 
Another game I see a lot of people talking about is this new game called Grey Zone Warfare, and it looks to me like this is a sort of a Milsim extraction shooter sort of thing. It's leaning into very realistic territory, which I have to be honest, guys, is absolutely not my cup of tea. If you guys want me to play it, please let me know in the comment section. I will give my first impressions, but just so you know, I'm going to be honest, and this might not be my personal preference of a game. And the last game I'm going to mention is Delta Force Hawk Ops. I will be definitely making videos on that and streaming it whenever playtests arise for that game. So turn notifications on if you want to see videos about Delta Force. Because I genuinely hope that game is good and forms some at least moderate competition for Battlefield. Still, when you look at the FPS market, nothing competes with Battlefield. Really, nothing does. What do we have? Ground War from Call of Duty? But that's not really a direct competitor, in my opinion, because you're, you're playing COD, right? It's not really like Battlefield. It doesn't fulfill the same itch, if that makes sense. Moving on to the last topic of this video, if you are still watching, that means you're a true OG of the channel, and I really do appreciate you. Um, I was thinking about making a second channel that really wouldn't be involved in gaming whatsoever, and I wanted to base this channel around some of my personal interests that I have accumulated over the past few years, and some of these interests would be uh, what I determined to be classic menswear, fragrances, generally just like where to buy things, where to find good deals, my personal opinion on men's cologne and fragrances, and give you guys suggestions there. Because in my personal life, these are passions of mine that I really, really love, and I do think I have built up some pretty awesome knowledge regarding just how to save some money, what to look for, how to tell if something is quality, you know, maybe some style tips here or there. I'm not going to say that I'm like some sort of Rico Suave, right? I'm not like a men's tailor or anything like that. This is just, you know, casual suggestion sort of channel to maybe help some people out, find some things they like, and to have a discussion about these topics. One example that I could feature on the channel is my experience with buying leather dress shoes or leather boots and all the brands that I have tried and just some ways I find that help me find my size and how to tell if it's the right size. Because I think a lot of people are actually wearing shoes that don't quite fit, but maybe they don't know they don't quite fit. And another thing I could do is I could express my personal taste for cologne. I tend to have a fairly versatile taste, but I would say I'm fairly quote-unquote subdued, and I think I have a lot of good suggestions for, let's say, office safe fragrances, things that aren't offensive to anybody, things that you can wear really anywhere, and I know where to get really good deals on these things as well, because people go out and spell, spend full price on these things, that could be hundreds upon hundreds of dollars, but they don't know that there are discounter websites that you can buy fragrances on that can save you hundreds of hundreds of dollars, you get the real thing, and everyone's happy. And I'm fully aware that there are absolutely channels out there that will cover the same topics and just do a better job at it than me, but I think this is more of a fun thing for me to do and just see what happens. So definitely let me know in the comments about all of that. Again, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for watching up until this point if you did, and I'll see you guys in the next one.